What's up, Doombots? Tony Skinjili here with a quick, I want to say, opinion video. More of like a, this is what I do, maybe it'll help you kind of video. And I only really recognized it because I've been talking to you guys, uh, both in my Discord, which is obviously linked below, on my stream. I, you know, I, I take what is said to me from the community pretty seriously, especially when someone comes up with an idea. This is all going to be about ISO 8s. What I've noticed a lot of times is the biggest question I did an entire series linked somewhere over here uh, about ISO 8s and you know what the best case or how I use them and and the truth is when it comes to ISOs and tier 4s and team builds and placements um there are times where there is duh obvious like yes let's do that uh, and then there are times especially when newer characters where it's not so obvious there's also times where your character's investment themselves, their powers, their red stars, all that, can kind of factor in. Uh, like we would said many times, ISO 8s themselves are fundamentally a wide open format. There really isn't any right or wrong choices, but there are best and worst choices comparatively. So for that, uh, someone informed me recently that msf.gg has added a meta confidence or trend setup. So they have it for tier 4s, which... Uh, this one I'm going to just ignore. I don't actually like the idea of Tier 4s, mainly because Tier 4 credits are very situational. Obviously, in a perfect world, we would Tier 4 every ability. That is not the world we live in. We have to be a little bit more discerning with what we invest in as players. So seeing, you know, most of Phoenix's abilities being Tier 4, or that, more importantly, most people to do this doesn't really help uh on the exact opposite side we have black bolt and knowing that the most amount of people for tier fours and black bolt black bolt like almost all you know tier four almost all black bolts abilities that doesn't inherently help people um especially when it comes to like what order or how frequently uh you'll notice even if you go down you'll track like a long time before you see Maw, and Maw's got 88% on Insidious Whisper. It's because there is actually no 100% right choice. Even Symbiote Spider Man and Perfect Host, it really only makes a difference on the full team. It doesn't help him that much on its own going up one if you just check it right here. But that extra 20% max health, good for him, great for an entire team. So. Uh, that's where you kind of get a little disconnect. What I care about here, and this is, by the way, I still think this resource is great, is I care about the ISO confidence. Uh, what this will end up doing is let you search by a character, so we'll use, just for the sake of the argument, Bishop. He's relatively new, and I've been getting a lot of questions on it. Uh, most people uh, put Striker on Bishop, and, you know, there's no information as to why, but to let you guys know, it's because Bishop do damage, so make damage do boom booms. That's it. Uh, Skirmisher is the second most high at 36%, and that reason is very clear, uh, because he's counterattacking so often that he's going to get a lot of free vulnerables on a lot of different targets. Uh, is there a right or wrong choice? No. Is there a clearly best choice? For you, there might be, but overall, there's no one right answer. I personally think for this case, Bishop gets the, uh, upgrade... Uh, the stronger he is, so if you have like an 80 or 90k bishop, very high investment, you want Striker to lean into it. If you don't have that strong a bishop, if he's like 40 to 50, maybe 60k, not a lot of tier 4s and everything, Skirmisher gets a little bit more value for what the team is trying to do. But again, that's its own conversation. We'll get to that when we do the ISO 8 video for those characters. One thing I do appreciate the most about this is this idea that it's based on confidence. Confidence is something where you can determine based on X number of people who are contributing information this is what we get and i want to draw a comparison really quickly uh for anyone who plays league of legends or very similar style games you can see they have websites right here that track the meta uh this is a very common league of legends character vigar and for a rams or all random characters all mid basically just a team fight showdown for those who aren't aware uh he is one of the best characters he's got a high win rate but then you see the best item final build and then this build order uh this is not without a shadow of a doubt the absolute best thing that you as a player should do that's something that that kind of gets lost whenever you look up builds on characters for stuff like this 
uh, it says, this is along the lines of some of the best things you can do. And you know what? This might be pretty close to the best, but what it doesn't factor in is variation. So you need to be in League of Legends, a smart enough player to know that these items are the best items in a vacuum. Just assuming the character is, for lack of a better word, unbothered or unharassed by your opponents. On the other side, if your opponents tend to have more health or whatever, this was going to deviate. Not only might you switch around what gets built first, you might audible and then put a, a more defensive item or a different kind of offensive item based on what you're going up against. This is the uh, framework or guideline for what to do. And then as you become a better player, you can discern whether or not following this is correct. And this is fundamentally a good resource up to a point and the rest is up to you. It's like leading a horse, a horse to water, but you can't force him to drink. This is the water, we're the horses. When you look at this, it's the exact same thing. This is the water, use the resource to know most people put Skirmisher on Aim Assaulter. Why? Well, that's up to you to decide or to listen to a content creator. Some people put Striker. Why? Because he has the highest base, one of the highest base damage stats of any character. Does that matter? No, of course it doesn't. But for 16% of the players, sorry, it does. Uh, same thing with pretty much everybody. So I think this is a phenomenal resource, and I'm very thankful to the guys over at msf.gg, which is right here, even though you can't see it. Here you go, guys. Here's your plug um, to go in. There's one other thing I want to talk about as far as how I interact with abilities. Uh, when you get a new character, and I have it right over here, using Deadpool as an example, so many times people are worried about wasting their isos or wasting their ions. More specifically, ions. Isos, you can get a decent amount every day. You have plenty of orbs you have. You can spend money on them, even though I wouldn't advocate for it. And, of course, you can farm them in many different nodes. Most of these isos have multiple different nodes. The issue, and you're going to notice it, you probably have already noticed, is what happens if you make a mistake because mistakes tend to cost ions and ions are static in that you can only get without spending money or doing something out of the ordinary a set amount over the course of a day a week a month etc so one thing that i do when i'm not sure and you'll see this with like me on a new team like maybe the skilletary before we all realized they weren't that great uh, or with the astonishing x-men one thing I do is no matter what, I'm going to bring the character to ISO 8 level 3. Uh, the reason why is because each of these, as we talked about before, is a 2% stat increase. And it's very reasonable to put a total of 9 ISO 8s into the <laughs> abilities. You know, like it's not difficult to spend 9 of each. Even getting them, it'll probably only take you a day or two to get 9 of any you know, one or two of these as you go along the line. So it's not unreasonable to do that. A 6% damage increase is as good as, you know, a striker level two, or it's a decent buff to the stats, especially the later in the game you are, when you have higher gear tier, higher star levels, that 6% starts to add up meaningfully. So what I do on characters that I'm not 100% sure of, or characters I like to do that, is I test. I will bring them up to 6 because that's the lowest cost. It has a very low cost as far as ISOs and a moderately low cost as far as ions to get a character to 3. That sets them up for a good base stat increase. And then as I'm switching between uh, or deciding what to use, as you can see here, I can test them. I could determine if Skirmisher works better for Deadpool or if Striker works better for Deadpool. Or, for some reason, if Raider would work better for the Deadpool. This is what I consider to be due diligence when it comes to deciding characters. Yes, some characters are very obvious in what they get. Uh, some healers get healers. Some tanks get fortifier. Some damage dealers get striker. You know, uh, Ghost gets striker. It's the best thing for Ghost. But what you forget is that it costs you literal nothing to put one rank on any of these absolute there's no cost at all it costs time it doesn't cost resources doesn't cost ions doesn't cost uh, iso eights no gold just do it so while it's kind of silly to think about it and i'm not even going to put fortifier on here 
you can get the testing for the average character result through this. You can see, hey, is I think Skirmisher is going to work on this guy. Let's just see. And yeah, you're not going to get the full value of a rank 2 or 3 Skirmisher uh, because you're just testing it is. But that's why you're using Skirmisher. You're using Skirmisher for the vulnerability procs for the most part. And then, of course, you could see, hey, if that character was vulnerable, this ability would have cleared a buff. How often that's relevant or not. Same thing with Striker. Hey, uh, this guy would have bonused attack for more damage as opposed to just what it is. Would that have been the difference maker on, on, on a fight or something along those lines? Raider, same thing. Wow, he's constantly hitting multiple characters. Maybe if he was, and he's critting very often. Maybe if I had Raider on him. This is my recommendation for every player on how to spend the ISOs. You, first of all, just get one on them just to play around, but feel free to play around with them. Don't feel like you're responsible now to go ahead and spend, what is it, 15,000? I think it's five and then 15 on, uh, on each of these. So it's a total of, oh, it's 21, 21,000, sorry. 21,000 ions just to get a character to rank three when you're not 100% sure because we are only getting X ions every week as of right now. So that's it, that's my takeaway. When it comes to ISOs, this is just a best practices kind of thing that I've been doing. Uh, I've been looking at a combination of three things, looking at what people are doing with it, uh, trying to understand why they are doing it that way. Uh, I care more that 16% of people think Striker is good than 70%. 70% of people could be idiots. As a matter of fact, 76.6% 76, of people being idiots is a dramatically low amount of, of, of idiots as far as I'm concerned. But that said, we don't know until we figure it out. Why is Healer, Skirmisher, and Striker so varied or so close for this character, these are questions you have to ask yourself. Now, if you don't want to do that, this resource is phenomenal for you. You get to put it in a spoon and you get to feed yourself with the spoon that someone else filled for you. Do not worry. Honestly, it'll probably be fine. But if you're looking for a little bit more control over your game and, and learning how the game works and how to be better than somebody just following the rules, this is a phenomenal resource, much like we said with League of Legends, uh, where you can use this information to determine how you're going to play. Uh, in addition, without panicking and wasting resources that you're not 100% confident in, feel free to get them ready to go at a decent stat increase, but leave them at the lowest rank just so you can get a feel for what the abilities do uh, without worrying. Now, obviously, Skirmisher at rank 5 is very different, and these things are very different. So you can't get the full picture, but at least it won't cost you resources. You won't regret the mistake. Anyway, uh, comment below. Let me know if you do something similar to this, or if you're like, YOLO, everyone gets whatever I damn well want, uh, and we'll find out. But anyway, have a good night, guys. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangili, and I will catch you later.